What up? What up? What up? Daniel Augustine here with another episode of Multi Hyphenate AF. Week 11. Very good week of football. Very good week of football. I'm looking forward to week 12 as well. Now, when I dive into week 11, I thought that there were quite a few games that were very telling, quite a few games that uh, were just kind of itching to happen. Game number one that I'm going to talk about uh, Miami Hurricanes playing Georgia Tech. I thought this was a trap game from the very beginning. When I saw Georgia Tech play against FSU at the very beginning of the season, I thought Georgia Tech was a very well-rounded team. They don't throw the ball that much, but Haynes King does a great job at throwing it when he needs to. Georgia Tech does a great job of converting on third down, keeping it from getting to third down. They do a great job of controlling the ball at the line of scrimmage. And the fact that their head coach was a former offensive lineman coach, that's where he puts a lot of his focus. So the fact that he puts a lot of his focus on the offensive line. They run the ball. The quarterback runs the ball. The backup quarterback runs the ball. They have a very, very good tailback who didn't even finish the game, had three carries, had about 70 or so yards on three carries, and he was getting ready to do damage to the Hurricanes. Miami was bound to take a loss. They were bound to. They almost lost to Duke, almost lost to Cal, almost lost to Virginia Tech. They have been messing around, playing around with their food all throughout the season. Cam Ward has been bailing them out. Cam Ward shows you exactly what you get when you have a very talented, seasoned quarterback. There are a ton of teams in college football right now in the NFL that have essential pieces, man. They got pieces without the quarterback. You can't get that far. You cannot accomplish your goals. You just can't. The quarterback is, he is the driver of the vehicle. Don't care who's in the passenger seat. I do care who's in the passenger seat. I do care who's in the back seat because these are the people, just like a nice car, nice car, just like NASCAR. These are the people who are going to help you swap that tire out and keep it going, move it fast. Oh, we got to get rid of this one. We got to. These are the people that are going to help you. You're, you know, when you have a, your pit stops or what, what have you. I'm doing too much with that analogy. So Cam Ward has been making the biggest difference on this Miami squad. Without Cam Ward, this team, Miami, we're looking at an eight and four team. You know, we're looking at a seven and five team. Truth be told. He is the reason why you can see how well their receivers can shine. There are a ton of receivers at a ton of other schools that just simply liked that school, liked the recruiter, didn't get that much attention from whoever was recruiting them. And so they're not at a big name school, big brand school. They're at a smaller school, but they are very, very, very talented. And so they slip through the cracks. And the only people who tend to find them, hopefully, is the recruiter the guy who is recruiting people and he works for the Washington Commanders. He works for the New York Giants. He works for the New Orleans Saints. And he's just, he or she just has their eye on the dial and they're able to see the things. But, you know, this Miami Hurricanes team, they're still a very good team. And I think this was a very important loss for them to have. Uh, as weird as that sounds sometimes, you learn more than, when you lose than when you learn in, in, a, in a win. You don't really clean everything up in a win because wins make you feel like a winner wins make you feel successful wins make you feel like ain't nothing to clean up we did it we did that who's next it's us we got it we them boys that's what happens when you win you got people like michael irvin on the sideline that's constantly getting everybody riled up and it just feels good you just and then the next week you move up in the rankings and they're saying saying cam ward for heisman how are you going to really address what you need to address? Time of possession wise, Georgia Tech had the ball for 35 minutes to the Miami Hurricanes 25. So there's not much room for error when it comes to possessions that the Miami Hurricanes have the ball where they can't score. You end up having to score every single time you touch the ball. And Cam Ward is nice, but that doesn't mean that you're going to score every single time you touch the ball. There's just too many things that can happen. On a possession, whether that be an offensive lineman get a holding call, whether that be a receiver falls down while he's on a route and the quarterback overthrows him, whether that be the quarterback underthrows the route. It's so many things. A sack, a fumble, interception. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The margin of error shrinks when you don't have the ball as much. You end up winning the time of possession battle and you're the one that dominates the ball, dominates the, the field possession, time of possession battle. Okay, we had the ball for 35 minutes. We were able to kind of flounder on these two or three possessions. They only scored on two possessions. Okay, cool. So it makes sense why we won. We dominated. We had more opportunities. But when you look at the stats, total plays, Georgia Tech, they had 64 plays to the Hurricane 63 plays. So even though the Georgia Tech 
uh, uh, Yellow Jackets had the ball much longer than the Hurricanes did, they didn't even really overdo it on offense. They just were more efficient. On third down, Georgia Tech was 9 of 14. That is unheard of. That is a ridiculous stat line. That's unheard of. That is so efficient. It's wild. The Hurricane, <clears throat> the Hurricanes, however, were 3 of 10. 30%. 30%. Georgia Tech was over 50%. Georgia Tech, if I was going to do the math, that's 10 of 14, 5 of 7. That is over 50%. That is... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Thank you. Just off the top of my head, that's 65, 70%. So that means you're not getting off the field. That means you're not getting... That means you're not... That means that ultimately you are staying on the field when this other team that's dangerous and can score like this. You saw Cam Ward's first touchdown. You're not giving them the chance to get back on the field, you win the time of possession battle, you just about win the game. Just about, okay? Georgia Tech did not have any turnovers. They played smart. Miami, they fumbled the ball at the end of the game. One of the biggest turnovers in the game. One of their biggest turnovers, turnovers one of their biggest turnovers throughout the entire season. And so they catch the L. This hurts for the Hurricanes. It hurts their college football playoff bid, the seed. It hurts... Their ego, all that, <laughs> cut it off. Can't even stop nobody on defense, cut it off. Now, the Hurricanes, they got their work cut out for them. They absolutely have their work cut out for them. They got their work cut out, they, they have their work cut out for them. They got Wake Forest and then they got Syracuse. I think the Syracuse game will be a shootout. Uh, there's no way around that. And I think that ultimately, Miami is probably gonna be a better team if they're an underdog. This Miami Hurricanes team isn't the kind of team that's going to show up and show out every single game as that number one seed, the seed, the team with the bye. This team doesn't do well with that mindset. This team has to be the underdog. I think Mario Cristobal is an underdog kind of coach. I think your team needs to match that, and I think they will match that. Ultimately, I mean, they're ranked 12th now, so at the end of the day, upon them making it to the college football playoff, they're probably not going to get that, that, that first-round bye unless they win in the ACC title game. They got to get there first, so they got to win out. And then we'll see what happens. But I think this team is better served as a team that does not have the, the adoration of everybody in the media. They need to be underdogs. They're going to play better as underdogs. I think their defense is going to play with an edge. And it's a shame that they're not playing with the edge right now. I don't know what the hell is going on. Isn't Jason Taylor over there coaching the defensive line? Kind of trippy to me that Warren Sapp can have the Colorado Buffalo defensive line playing with their hair on fire. But the Miami Hurricanes are playing like there is a tomorrow. Every single game needs to feel like it is another biggest game of the season type of game. Every single game needs to feel like that. And I don't see how they're not showing up understanding that Georgia Tech wants to run the ball. They want to control the ball. What are we going to do about that? I'm not seeing the best coaching in college football. I see players. I see studs. I see athletes. I see stars. But I don't see the best coaches. And it shows when teams take L's that they shouldn't really take. The L that Alabama took to Vanderbilt shouldn't have happened. Shouldn't have happened. And I don't know how much Alabama learned from that loss. Yes, they beat the hell out of LSU, but I don't know how much they learned from it until we see them face that type of team. Again, a team that can win the time of possession battle. A team where that is their identity.